أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهده لا فلا مدلة ومن يدرر يا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له عز وجل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أصله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يأسيه ما فإن لا يدور إلا نفسه ولا يدور لها شيئا أما بعد فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم في سورة بقرة بسم الله وإذا سألك عبادي أني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الدائي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون وصدق الله العظيم بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الكريم ونفعني وياكم بالذكر الحكيم إنه هو جواد رؤوف رحيم الآن حي الترجم I seek refuge in Allah from Satan from Shaitan the accursed devil in the name of Allah the merciful the compassionate all praise is due to Allah I seek his help and beg his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the mischief and the evil of our souls. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead that person astray. And whomsoever Allah finds in error, there is none to guide them. I bear witness that there is no God, no deity worthy of worship existing other than Allah, who is one alone and unique without partner or associate. And I bear witness further that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is Allah's servant, messenger, and apostle. And he Allah has sent his messenger in truth and with the truth as a bearer of glad tidings and also as a warner in advance of the hour of judgment. And therefore, whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger, surely that person is rightly guided. And whosoever disobeys the two of them, surely that person harms only his or her own soul. And they harm not Allah the slightest little bit. As for what follows. For Allah, glory be to him, has said in the Quran, in the 186th ayah or verse of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah and the longest surah of the Quran. When my servants question you about me, tell them that I am very close to them. I answer the prayer of every petitioner when he calls me. Therefore, they should respond to me and believe in me so that they may be rightly guided. And surely Allah, glory be to him, has spoken the truth. O you who worship Allah, we find ourselves now down to the last couple of days of the month of Ramadan. 
last day or two. And I would ask you to reflect upon the fact that it was just a few weeks ago that I was speaking to you and I was saying that Ramadan is coming. Now here we are in the blink of an eye and Ramadan is going or gone already. It comes slowly, but once it gets here, it leaves quickly. And so as we draw to a close and observation of this sacred month, and we draw closer, draw closer to the moment when the gates to Jannah, the gates to paradise, will close, and the gates to the hellfire will be flung open. It is for you and I to reflect upon essential lessons that we could have learned or maybe we did learn from fasting during this month. The reason why I described the month or the, the approaching moment as I did is because of the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, is a dakala shahru Ramadan, futihat abwabu jannah, wa gulikat abwabu jahannam, wa shayateen, he said. When the month of Ramadan comes, the gates to heaven, the gates to paradise are opened, and the gates to hell are closed, he said, and the demons are restrained. Well, if that's what happens when Ramadan comes, then we're supposed to be intelligent enough to understand that when Ramadan is gone, that the opposite happens that the gates to Jannah close, meaning opportunities, opportunities to earn a, 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 a higher degrees of Allah's mercy draw to a close. And the gates to hell are flung back open where they will remain until Ramadan next year. And the demons, the personal demons, the personal devils, each one of us has them. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, there is no human being who does not have qareenun min al-mala'ika wa qareenun min al-jinn, he said. Every person has a close companion from the angels and a close companion from the jinn, he said, meaning uh, the jinn shayateen, personal devils, personal devils who are with us at all times, who know us, who know our weaknesses, who know what we are susceptible to and who are constantly whispering, encouraging us to do that which will lead us to the hellfire. And it is only the counterbalance of the whisper of the angels and the, the strength that we gain from obedience to Allah that keeps us from uh, falling victim to an even larger degree 
then we already fall victim. And it is those personal demons, intimate devils, your devil, not his or her, your devil, my devil, that is restrained during Ramadan by the activities of the sound, the activities of the fast. If you spend or if you have spent this month fasting by day and praying by night, restraining your lower self by day, and feeding and watering your higher self by night, then perhaps you have been aware of a, an, an inner feeling caused by the tying up of your personal devil. But beware. Beware for the sacred month is drawing to a close. With the passing of every hour and the tick of the clock. And those demons who you locked up out of fear for Allah and whom Allah empowered you to overcome and tie up or restrain or chain up. They're waiting to get loose again. And they're not going to just ease out. I remember once years ago, we were in a... Um, a class with Wa'alimi, Sheikh Alama Tawfiq Rahmatullah Ali, the founding Imam of this Jamaat. So as uh, young people, we were sitting in a class with him and he said, once he reminded us of this phenomenon by asking us a question. He said, have you ever seen a doll that's locked up in a room or in some kind of confining space for a long period of time. And then when the door to that room is open, he said the dog will race out. He doesn't walk out. He doesn't ease out. He races out and might start running around in a circle and just running looking for something to bite, and you look in the room, you might see feces in the room, all kind of stuff. And he said to us, beware of the moment when it comes time to loose your demons. Because they will come out of confinement angry. They will come out of confinement agitated for all the things they wanted to manifest in speech and in looks and in feelings. And the only reason they didn't manifest was because of your and my fear of Allah. So beware. The moment comes during these last few days of it min and nah during these last few days of freedom from the fire. Beware of your and my enemy, Allah says, inna shaitan lil insanin aduwan mubin. Surely Satan is to the human being a clear enemy. Surely Satan is to the in, uh, human being an open enemy, beware of him, and seek refuge in Allah, O you who worship Allah. In the ayah that I read from the Quran, this is an ayah we pass during our reading of the first juice weeks ago when Ramadan started. And when we uh, 
read where Allah said, Ya yuhala zina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattakum. O believers, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that perhaps you may acquire some taqwa, some fear of God, some fear of Allah. We read that verse. And then we read the beginning of the next verse that says, Shahru Ramadan al-Lazi unzi la fi hil Qur'an huda al-linnas wa bayyanat min al-huda wal-furqan. It is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed, Allah has said, a guidance for mankind with clear teaching showing the right way and a criteria between truth and falsehood. But then after we had read the two verses that began with those statements, there was a third verse, verse uh, 186, Ayah 186, that appears right after the two verses in which Allah talks about fasting during the month of Ramadan. By the way, Ramadan is the only month that Allah mentions by name in the Quran. Only Ramadan, he mentions by name. Shahru Ramadan al-Lazi unzi la fihi al-Quran, he says. But after these two verses where Allah talks about Ramadan and why we fast during the month of Ramadan and his prescription of fasting, by the way, you know, prescriptions, we could say establishment. I purposely said prescription because prescriptions are for sick people. Prescriptions are those, when you have an illness, you go to the doctor, he gives you a prescription that if you take it, and take it according to instructions, and the medicine is effective, you will be healed. And Allah, glory be to him, describes the Quran as a healing. She fought on the mosque. Uh, leave my fifth to door, Allah says. A healing for that which is in your uh, breast, your chest. And I want to let you in on something. He's not talking about our lungs. He's talking about the heart. The heart that is inextricably linked to the mind. And it is our mind, our heart and the decisions that we make that incline us toward Jannah or Jahannam, toward heaven or hell. And so after having mentioned fasting and uh, Ramadan, Allah then goes to a, a verse, when my servants question you about me, Tell them I'm very close to them. I answer the prayer of every petitioner when he calls on me. Therefore, they should respond to me and believe in me so that they may be rightly guided. And then the verse after that, Allah goes right back to talking about Ramadan. I noticed that this year. When we, we, you know, we started reading the deuce and I said, wait, wait a minute. Because the Quran is Allah's speech. And he could have just kept right consistently talking on Ramadan and stayed on the subject. But he started off talking about Ramadan. Then he veers off for a moment, just a verse, and talks about nearness to him. Then he goes right back to talking about fasting. I wonder how many of us were consciously struggling to be close to Allah over these past few weeks. I mean, if you were fasting, you couldn't help but feel closer to Allah. Because it's a, um, a, a side effect 
of ibadah, of worship. But in this verse, Allah states affirmatively, first of all, you have to read as a hadith of Sahih Bukhari, that actually uh, reveals uh, why this verse was sent down by Allah. It's right there in Sahih Bukhari. I think it might be in a uh, it might be in Kitab Dua, the Book of Duas, I think, or the uh, the Book of Tafsir, one of one of those two. And it says that one day a man went to the Messenger of Allah, I did salam was salat, one of the companions, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, is Allah Baidan or is Allah Qariban? He asked him. Is Allah far away? Or is Allah close? And when he asked Allah's messenger, Ayyad Salam, this question, the, the Sahih Hadith, the authentic narration says, the Prophet paused. In other words, he didn't answer him right away. He paused. And then after a few moments, he looked at the man and he said, Allah is near. And when you read that hadith, you realize that that pause, when the prophet paused and didn't answer right away, it was because at that moment Allah revealed this ayah to him. And Allah said to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they ask you about me, Tell them I'm close. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah says, I'm closer to them than their jugular vein. You've heard me mention it. I can't mention this enough because in the human physiology, there's nothing closer to you than your jugular vein. That's the, that's the main artery runs through your neck, the jugular vein. Uh, the rest of your body, you know, because the arteries and veins run throughout the body, but if you cut them on purpose or by accident, then uh, the blood will ooze out. If you cut your jugular vein, your jugular vein, the blood gushes out, shoots out like that. And if you don't hurry up and put pressure or stop it, you're going to be dead in a couple of minutes. That's why when we slaughter an animal, in order to put the animal out of its mercy and several other things, we cut the jugular vein in the Zabiha process. That's how critical a lifeline is, uh, how critical a lifeline the jugular vein is. And then Allah says, I'm closer to you than that. It's Allah speaking. So Allah told the Prophet, when they ask you about me, as they always were doing, Ya Rasulullah, what, what is it about Allah, this and that? What does Allah mean, this and that? What is it we believe about Allah and what we don't believe about Allah? They were constantly asking his messenger about Allah. And so Allah instructed him when they asked you about me, uh, parenthetically, as he just did, as the companion just did, tell him I'm near. I listen, here it is, I answer the prayer of every petitioner when he calls on me, meaning the believing petitioner. The Hadith Qudsi, a sacred Hadith, where the Prophet said that Allah says, when my servant raises his or her hands up to me, meaning in dua, particularly during the last third of the night, Allah says, I'm too ashamed. Here's the Lord of the world saying, I'm too ashamed to let him or let her put their hands back down without answering their dua, answering their petition. So as the saying goes, never underestimate the power of du'a. 
of you who believe. So Allah affirms, I answer every petition, every dua, every beg. But by the way, you know, we should always be aware that he doesn't say, I tell everybody yes every time they petition. Sometimes Allah's answer is no or hmm, not right now. Practice some sovereign and maybe you will be granted what you beg for. And we should remember that, see, because some of us, yeah, bad understanding, man. Well, you know, we, we think that just because we ask a lot that Allah is always going to say yes. Like a spoiled child who asks his or her mother or father something, and the first time the parents say no, they get upset. <laughs> yeah, well, Allah is going to say no sometime. Because Allah knows what's best for you and I. And Allah functions in his own time. Allah's time is not like our time. Allah's watch is not like our watch. Allah creates uh, a day during the month of Ramadan that's better than a thousand months. That's by his time. The days of creation, now that we're scientifically advanced enough to understand, the days of creation, Allah's days were in fact equal to thousands of years of man's days. So sometimes when we send the dua up, oh Allah, do this for me, please, do that for me. Allah says, well, okay, but I'm going to do it in my own time. And that's why the Prophet salam, instructed the believers, he said, when you make dua to Allah, ask clearly for what it is you need, and then practice sovereign, he says. Then be patient. And the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean, ask Allah and then be patient? He said, don't put time limits on Allah. And continue to make dua, continue to ask to Allah answer. That's sovereign in dua. And Nabi Musa, alayhi salam, he made a dua to Allah. He asked Allah to free his people from the, the tyranny of Fir'aun. Allah said, okay, yes. Took him 40 years to answer that prayer. How long will Allah take to answer your prayers? No matter how fervent or sincere they might be. And will you practice patience with Allah in awaiting his answer? So Allah said to the Prophet, salam, I answer the prayer of every petitioner when he calls on me. Therefore, they should respond to my call and believe in me. We're always keen about what we want Allah to do for us. Well, Allah is keen about what, what he wants for us to do, not for him, because he is who he is regardless, but in terms of what he orders us to do, he commands us to do. We always say, Allah did this and that for me. Okay, good, so now it's your turn. That, as he says, la'allahum yarshudun, that perhaps you may be rightly guided, O you who worship Allah. So the point, my point, is that we are created with a nearness to Allah. But during the month of Ramadan, the activity of Ramadan is meant to teach us, don't forget Allah said, la'allakum tattakum, maybe you're going to acquire some taqwa, and maybe not. The fast is meant to teach us that which we have to do to draw even closer to Allah. 
deliberately, consciously. No, I, 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 I want to be even closer than I am, particularly if I've wandered off during the course of a year, particularly if I've gone astray in, by, by a degree or degrees. I want to be closer. And we learn how to be closer to Allah, not physically closer, because Allah has no physical being physical manifestation. Allah is beyond and apart from his creation. So when you hear close or far, it means in awareness, in presence. And some people are far away from Allah. Disobedience makes you move far away from Allah. Heedlessness, sin, moves you away from Allah. Submission, obedience, moves you closer to Allah. Can, can I prove it? Yeah, I, I, I can prove it. I can prove it, but I want you, want you to just let it sink in for a minute. The Christians, they have a, a song they sing. I ain't going to sing it. I ain't going to sing it. But they have a song they sing. It's, it's, it's called, because uh, I told you, I used to be Christian when I was a youngster. Christian, they have a song they sing. It's, it's name of it is "Nearer, O God, to Thee." That's the name of the song. "Nearer, O God, to Thee." Here's a Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi number twenty-five says, "On the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him." who said that the messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, said that Allah glorified and exalted be, he said. Whoever shows enmity, you know, hatred, negativity, whoever shows enmity to someone devoted to me, I shall be at war with him. My servant draws not near to me, with anything more loved by me than the fara'id, the religious duties I have enjoined upon him. And my servant continues to draw near to me with nawafil, extra works, supererogatory works, so that I shall love him, meaning love him or her. When I love him or her, I am his or her hearing with, when he, with which he or she hears. His or her seeing with which he or she sees. His or her hand with which he or she strikes. And his or her foot with which he or she walks. Were he or she to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him or her. And were he or she to ask me for refuge, I would surely grant it to him or her. I do not hesitate about anything as much as I hesitate of seizing the soul of my faithful servant. He or she hates death, and I hate hurting him or her. And this is authenticated, uh, 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 related by uh, uh, Imam al-Bukhari. So again, Allah says, that which draws the servant close to me are the fara'id. Shahada draws, bearing witness, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, is a duty for the believer. And it draws us close to Allah. Rejecting that message distances us from Allah. Praying the Salah, paying the Zakah, fasting during the month of Ramadan, and Hajj are acts of ibadah, acts of worship that draw us close to Allah. And the only thing that draws us closer to Allah than those things is doing more of them. 
the fard of the salah establishes a closeness. You want to be even closer? Increase your salah. Giving fisa bilillah establishes closeness. You want to be even closer? Give more. Fast more. Make not only accept Allah's invitation to his house and don't just make a uh, hajj, go, go for Umrah also. And this is why when the man asked the Prophet, salam, how do you be a Muslim? What, what do you have to do to be a Muslim? Prophet kept answering him on two levels. Prophet told him, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have to bear witness. The man said, well, what else? The prophet said, well, you have to make this salah five times a day. The man said, that's it? The prophet said, yeah, unless you want to do more than that. He said, well, what else do you have to do? The prophet said, zakah. The man said, is that all? The prophet said, yes, unless you want to do more than that. In other words, he was telling him, this is the minimum of what you have to do to be deliberately close to Allah, and this is how you can increase that. Remember that during these last couple of days of Ramadan. Tonight is the 29th night, our last odd night opportunity to seek Laylatul Qadr. But if you have been fasting, if you have been worshiping, if you have been standing up in, in Salatul Tarawih, you feel stronger already. You feel more empowered already, stronger in spirit. Why? Because you're closer to Allah. That's why. It's not a mystery. Well, it is a mystery, but it's not. It's because of your closeness. Just like we learned in science when we were young, if you have a magnetic source and then you take a piece of metal the closer the metal is to the source of the power, the more magnetized it becomes until it becomes magnetic. This is a principle of, of, of physics. Well, Allah is the Lord of power. There is no strength nor power except in Allah. So when we move closer to him, we feel empowered. And when we are distant from him, then we are weak. Oh, you who worship Allah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy. His mercy manifested during this sacred month. And let us strive to close out the month and prepare for the next one. In consciousness, in conscious awareness of the blessing of nearness to Allah. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. Kaisaru wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiru wa ta'ala wa ta'ala wa ta'ala. Audhu billahi bin ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ya wahman rahim. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عليه السلام والسلام وعلى آله وأصحابه وانصاره أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وأبعد فقال الله تعالى في كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض له ملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الذي خلقكم فمنكم كافر ومنكم مؤمن والله بما تعملون بصير خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق وصوركم فأحسن صوركم وإليه المصير وصدق الله العظيم اللهم اغفر لنا مسلمين ومسلمات ومؤمنين ومؤمنات ومحسنين ومحسنات وبعد. Oh dear believers, let me end the khutbah with uh, just 
a few verses from Allah and a hadith from his messenger. Allah says in the Quran, Surah 64, Surah Tagabun, mutual loss and gain, beginning at the first ayah. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, all that is in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah. To him belongs the kingdom, and to him is due all praise. And he has power over all things. It is he who created you. Yet some of you are unbelievers and some are believers. Allah is observant of all your actions. He created the heavens and the earth to manifest the truth. He shaped you and shaped you well. And to him you shall all return. And then, lastly, uh, Ibn al-Am, radiallahu an, qala, qala rasulullahi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, afdulul muhajirin, man hajra ma nahullah ta'ala anhu, wa afdulul jihad, man jahada nafsahu, vizatullah azza wa jah. The Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, the best immigrant, the best, the most excellent of those who migrate, Allah said. And we know migration is a deliberate, willful act of moving from one place to another. That's, that's called migration, immigration. The prophet said the best immigrant is the one who migrates from what Allah has prohibited. And the best jihad is that of one who struggles against his own desires for the sake of Allah, glorified and exalted be he. Remember this. Remember this at the end of Ramadan now. Remember this, and when the month ends, continue to strive to move away from Move away how? Move away in desire. Move away psychologically. Move away in energy. Some of us need to physically move away from some stuff. You know, some of us, part of our problem is we always in proximity, physically, we always in proximity to that which Allah has prohibited. You know, evil actions, evil places, evil company, evil boys, that's my boy. That's my girl, and he or she is a demon. You need to move away from them. Some of us, our problem, the reason why we have bad physical health is because of the food we eat. All you Muslims always up in McDonald's and all them other places, walk right by. This is New York now. New York is full of halal places. So it amazes me. I see a Muslim walking past the halal place walk past the halal place to go get inside some other place and eat that food. You don't know you need to move away from those places and move away from company and habits and actions that are to our detriment instead of to our benefit. The prophet said the best of those who migrate are those who migrate away from what Allah has prohibited and the best of those in jihad. This is a word we hear this word jihad time and time again. I'm in jihad. I'm doing jihad. As soon as I get myself together, I'm going to engage <laughs> in jihad. Oh, man, the, the show enough jihad, man, is waging war against the evil desires of your own self. That's where the fight is. As uh, our brother, Imam Jamil Abdullah al -Amin. may Allah preserve him. He will always, always say, man, if you can't whoop, you know, he's country, man. If you can't whoop the devil within, you'll never be able to whoop the devil without. So all you brothers and sisters with all these grand schemes or what you're going to do to somebody, Fisa be Allah, yeah, but what will you do to yourself, Fisa be Allah? What kind of work will you put in on you once Ramadan is over? Fisa be the law. 
we ask Allah to give us strength. For as his messenger said, there are two types of believers, strong ones and weak ones. But Allah loves, the prophet said, the strong believer. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Ameen wa alka ikabah.